This morning we'd like to draw your attention to the 21st verse of this first chapter of Philippians where Paul makes the statement, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. As we prepare for the Christmas celebration, I want to take a three-part series on the purpose of his coming. And today, the purpose of his coming to take away the fear of death. The Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die. God has set an appointment with you. It's appointed unto man once to die. You can't escape that appointment when it comes. The question is, are you fearful of that appointment? It seems that with man there is a natural fear of death. A part of it comes from our reluctance to leave our loved ones. God has given us beautiful, loving relationships, and we hesitate to, to leave those relationships with those that we love. It seems that we are never really ready to give up these relationships. But there is also a fear of death that comes from the fear of the unknown. There's something about the future that we don't know that creates at times fears. When man made his first venture into space, there were fears and apprehensions because of the unknown factors. When we made our first voyage to the moon, Again, there were fears because of the unknown factors of journeying through space to the moon. Will we be able to get them off of the moon and back to the earth? And the fear of the unknown. For the unsaved, there are many unknown factors concerning death and the future. And if the unsaved knew those factors, they would be even more frightened than they are of death. But for the believer, if we knew all of the facts, we would not be at all fearful of death. But as Paul, we would be willing rather to be absent from this body that we might be present with the Lord. In verse 23, Paul speaks of his mixed emotions. I find myself, he said, between two. I'm, I'm sort of in this strait between two. I have a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, I feel that you still need me. And so I'm sort of desiring to stay around for a little longer in order that I might continue to minister to you and help you come into a spiritual maturity. And so here I am, I'm torn between the two. But a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Those are not the words of a man who is fearful of death, but a man who has tremendous confidence in the future. In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he mentioned how that we who are in these bodies do often groan, earnestly desiring to be freed from the restriction of our bodies. Not that I would be an unembodied spirit, but that I might be clothed upon with the body which is from heaven. For we know that as long as we are living in these bodies, we are absent from the Lord, he said, but we would choose rather that we might be absent from these bodies in order that we might be present with the Lord. Of course, with Paul, 
heaven wasn't an unknown factor. The Lord had given Paul a little journey into heaven. He wrote about it when writing to the Corinthians. He said there was a man in Christ and whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but he was caught up to the third heaven. So Paul had a little visit in heaven. And after that visit in heaven, he had a longing and a desire to return, to be with Christ, which is far better. That it isn't an unknown factor. It's something I was there. And Paul said there were things that were so glorious so outstanding that it would be an absolute crime to even attempt to describe them with human language. There are no words that can come close to describing the glory, the wonder of, of being in heaven. And so Paul didn't even attempt to tell us what it was like. He said they're just no words for it. Forget it. And so we're coming again to the celebration of Christmas. And we're thinking again of the coming of Jesus Christ into the world. And a part of the purpose for his coming was to take away from man the fear of death. As we approach Christmas, I would like to ask you, what does Christmas mean to you? You know, back in the ancient days, the people at this time of the year had a holiday that they called Saturnalia. And because of the many superstitions, as the days were getting shorter and shorter, on up till December the 22nd, they felt that somehow the sun was getting weak. It was waning. It might die. And so they felt a necessity to help the poor sun to recover. And so they would light huge bonfires at night. They would light special candles. And the whole idea was to help poor sun out to make it through this winter solstice as the days are getting shorter and shorter. Maybe the sun will just go out and not shine and what will we do then? So let's help the sun out. And so they had this celebration called Saturnalia with their big bonfires and their special kinds of events. But on the 25th of December, as obviously the days are beginning now to lengthen, they had a great celebration. We, we did it. We helped the sun out. The days are getting longer. And so they would send gifts to one another and they would have big drunken brawls and, and riotous kinds of parties to celebrate. We've helped the sun make it through another year. As I look today at the world around us, I see very little difference between the celebration of Saturnalia and the way many people celebrate Christmas today. It's only gift giving and drinking and partying that they think about. We see all of the office parties and so forth that take place this time of the year. No real thought of, of the coming of the Savior into the world. No real thought of Jesus. It's party time. When Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, that woman of Samaria, he said, you worship, you know not what. 
And I think that that is true of a lot of people today when we talk about Christmas. They celebrate, they know not what. They really don't know what they're celebrating. John wrote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And then down a bit in verse 14, John said, And the word became flesh, and he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's what Christmas is all about. It's about God coming in human form to visit the earth that he had created it. But coming not just for a visit, but coming to remove sin. And in the removal of sin, removing the fear of death. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, the writer said, for as much then as we have bodies of flesh and blood, so he also took a body of flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, the purpose of his coming, to destroy him who had power of death, that is the devil, and to deliver them, men, who through fear of death were all of their lifetime subject to bondage. Man was held in the bondage of the fear of death. But Jesus came to remove the bondage and to remove the fear of death and to destroy the devil who had power over death. In Hebrews we read that Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. The word became flesh, but the purpose of his coming was to die for man's sins. And now because of his death, we no longer need to have a fear of death. At the end of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he cried, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh grave, where is your victory? And then he talked about the sting of death being sin. But Christ has taken away our sin and thus has taken away the sting of death. When we were little guys, my brother and I, we developed a technique of catching bees by their wings. If they were on a flower, if you're quick, you could grab them by their wings. You got to get both of them because if you only get one, they'll sting you. But if you can catch both, they can't sting you. And then we would spit on our Levi's. And we would touch the tail end of the bee to the wet Levi, and he'd sting it. And we would remove the stingers out of the bees. Once we removed the stingers, we'd put them on our arms and let them crawl all over us and crawl on our face. And the girls would come by, and this is what we loved. <laughs> they would be shocked at see bees crawling on us, and we're not afraid. They said, aren't you afraid of those bees? Nah. You know, 
tough, macho guys, you know. We're not afraid of bees. Of course, we knew that we had removed the stingers. And thus there was no fear of the bees crawling over you because they don't have stingers. Jesus has removed the sting of death. We don't need to fear. We don't have fear. Because the sting has been removed, which was sin. It was sin, actually, that brought death. When God placed Adam in the garden, he said, you can freely eat of all of the trees except the tree there in the middle of the garden. You're not to eat of that because in the day that you eat of that, you will surely die. And the day that Adam disobeyed God and did eat of that tree, he died spiritually. He lost his relationship with God. That oneness, that communion. So that God came into the garden to commune with Adam and he heard God and he hid himself because he realized his guilt. And God cried, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I hid myself. And God said, did you eat of the tree? Sin separated man from God. And not only spiritually, spiritually dead, You see, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But when he sinned, his spirit died. And thus, that relationship with God was broken. But then it also introduced into the body those elements that would cause an aging process and ultimately bring death. Some type of bacteria probably in that fruit that would begin to attack the human cells creating mutation, which would create an aging process and eventuate in death, physical death. And so, as we read in Romans, by one man, sin entered the world and death by sin, so that death passed unto all men for all sinned. And thus, from Adam till now, Men have died. And men have often had a tremendous fear of death. But for the child of God, there is no fear because Jesus came and the purpose of his coming was to take away sin, which was the sting of death. And thus, having removed the sting, he removes the fear of death. The Bible tells us that God laid on him the iniquities of us all. That all of us, like sheep, had gone astray. Every one of us had turned to his own way, but God laid on him the iniquities of us all. We were once sinners. We were once doomed to spend eternity separated from God, but no longer. Because Jesus bore our sin, we can now live in fellowship with God forever. We have that assurance through Jesus Christ. We have no longer a fear of growing older We have no longer a fear of death. And with Paul, we've come into a win-win situation. For me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Win-win. If I live, I live my life for the Lord. I live in fellowship with him. I live to do his will. I have the opportunity to lay up more treasures in heaven. And when I die, oh, in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And so it's a win-win situation. Now, if you're not a believer, you're in a lose-lose situation. I mean, you're a loss in life, and you're really lost in death. But Jesus came. 
to take away the fear of death in order that we with Paul can confidently say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. No fear. As as David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. That hope that we have through Jesus Christ. Several years ago, I preached a sermon similar to this when I was pastoring a church in Huntington Beach. The following week, there was a fellow came up and rang the doorbell. Kay looked out, saw who it was, saw his car, and says, don't go to the door, Chuck. She said, that guy's crazy. I said, well, honey, I got to answer the door. So I answered the door, and she stood sort of back behind me. And he said, come on out to the car, Chuck. I want to talk to you. She said, don't go. He's crazy. He'll shoot you. He's crazy, Chuck. Don't go. I said, oh, I'm all right, honey. And I went on out to the car. And he opened the door for me to get in, which I did. And I sat down, and he went around to the driver's side and came in, sat down, and immediately pulled a forty-five, pointed it at me, and the thing misfired twice. I could see the shells in the chamber, watch them spin. And the chief thought that went through my mind is, I'm married to a prophetess. Having misfired twice, he smiled and said, Last Sunday you said you weren't afraid to die. I wanted to see if that was so. He said, You passed the test. He had filed off the firing pin, but he just wanted to see how I would face death. And it was interesting for me to see how I faced death. The only thought, I'm married to a prophetess, you know. (laughs) But there was no fear. And there need not to be fear. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Jesus came. And the purpose of his coming was to take away your sin and thus deliver you from the bondage of the fear of death to set you free. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your coming. And we thank you for the fact that you laid upon Jesus all of our sin. That he died in our place to deliver us from sin, from the bondage of corruption, and to take away the fear of death. So that with Paul we can confidently say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's to be with you in your eternal kingdom forevermore. Lord, how grateful we are that the future is not unknown or uncertain for us, but it is secure in Christ Jesus. Lord, as we enter into this Christmas season, help us to not get so distracted by the tinsel and and by the lights and by those aspects of the celebration. But let us be conscious 
that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. To be absent from the body is just to be present with the Lord. And make this, Lord, a, a great time of, of remembering and of celebrating the real meaning of Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand? I know that Christmas is a celebration that the church borrowed from the pagans. Originally, it was just a pagan holiday celebrating Saturnalia, or the, as I said, the winter solstice, but the day's getting longer. But Christ was probably born sometime in October. Uh, we don't know when. But we have chosen this day as the day to commemorate Jesus coming into the world. Now, you can commemorate the day like the pagans. And you can just participate in the pagan aspects of the celebration. Or you can take it as a day to remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We choose to make it a day of commemoration for Jesus Christ. For his coming into the world to take away the fear of death. And we'll be dealing with other aspects in the purpose of his coming in the next couple of Sundays as we prepare our hearts to celebrate God's love for us.